Hello, this is Artsy Wisdom. My name is Diane. <sighs> I know, like all of you, we're in recovery mode, in the stages of grief. I've gotten past the shock. I don't know if I'm in depression. Actually, I'm not in depression. I know that. But I'm in anger. I think I'm in anger at this point. And I just wanted to get on here and talk to you guys and share with you what the images I'm getting. Also, I did some deep meditation today because I asked God, why, 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 what's happening? Why did many of these intuitive people, most of them, see Harris winning? What are we supposed to be learning through this? Why do we have to um, experience this? And why didn't people vote? Why didn't they see her as a, a candidate that is good for them? You know, and I started looking at, I was aggregating all the different psychic women or men to astrologers, numerologists. And I don't normally do that regularly, but this time I've been, you know, just <laughs> sitting on the floor crying into my Wheaties, which I don't usually eat Wheaties, but um, my coffee and my pie. But I uh, decided to just kind of compare notes. I wanted to pull in information and also not from the intuitive community, but also from the news online, on TV, um, uh, on, you know, newspapers, Reuters, New York Times, and stuff like that. And you guys, first of all, thank you for all of your lovely comments. I posted that in my little comment section. And thank you. You guys are awesome. I know in my last video, I was pretty downtrodden. And, uh, and I had some visitors, so I was busy with that on top of, you know, waiting. But I, I meditated today, and I want to share with you what I got from God about what's happening. I also have a list of different things I want to go over, or a list of questions. And some of them are related to cheating. Some of them are related to Musk and Russia and Donnie's health, um, his staff, you know democracy is doomed, you know, kind of thing. Is that the case? And I, I asked a bunch of those questions. I also had some stuff to share. So I thank you very much for coming back. Uh, and first or second of all, more importantly, and I forgot to say this, tomorrow is Veterans Day. Thank you to all those veterans who have given themselves to service for this country to protect our freedoms. Um, there are so many things that we probably don't see that they do. They're silently heroic, you know, a lot of that time. So thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you to the families that support them. Uh, okay, let's get started. That energy for that opening was pretty low. So I saw, I'm a little bit more excited now. So I'm going to... Um, quickly share with you what I got in my meditation. It's more of a, it's a spiritual angle, of course, because I was talking to God. So that's who she or he is. And we are all God. Just I, If you've never been here before, I see visions and I get images and I decipher them. But I also talk to the spirits around us, angels, ancestors, spiritual beings um, here on earth and in the heavenly realms. And wherever they are and I get it and I talk to them or I you know converse so but today I really wanted to zoom zone in or zoom in or hone in on what I was seeing and I just asked point blank questions and then I will get to you know the stuff about the propaganda and the more hard-hitting, regular day-to-day -day questions. Um, okay, sorry, I took notes because I don't remember stuff when I'm in that state of mind. So, Oh, I got the image where he said, or she said, we need to get to neutral. And it's an analogy about a car. Um, we right now are moving. What I got was that, say if we're a vehicle on top of a hill, we are, or our foot's on the gas and we're going down the hill too fast. Or if we let the car roll back, we're going to go back the other way. So 
he was suggesting, or God was suggesting, we put it in neutral. And this was related to emotional, you know, equilibrium, because everybody's a little bit nervous and upset right now, anxious. So he was saying, God was saying to put the car in neutral and just idle there. Leave it there until we have something to move on or think about or feel about because that space is safe and calm. And I thought that was a good analogy because you don't want to fall down the hill. A lot of the doomsday or the scrolling, if you just look anywhere, it's the end is near and all these terrible things are going to do and do and do, which they may or they may not. So taking one day at a time, staying in neutral, idling, we don't have to go forward. We don't have to go back. Just stay right here. Enjoy every moment. Live in this space. So I ask God, what, why? And not so much specifics about earthly problems, but he said, we are well, you are well. I'm going to read it while I wrote it, the way I wrote it, that he was talking to me or God was talking to me. You are well because I said so. You are me. And I've said this before, people, this is me, Diane, Diane, talking. God is within all of us for all fractions of light. You are us, he says, she says, God says. You are us. We're all one. We have won something glorious. That's what God says. We have won something glorious. Let go of unease. You are well. Be with one and I will be with you. Be with the one, meaning God, and I will be with you. So you direct your spiritual self. If you look to that pure love that God is, that's where your joy is. That's where you can stay, an idol. (laughs) Faith, which is an interesting thing. Faith is too generic of a word. God said it is pure love of all. That is what God is. Faith is about believing, yet knowing we are all one is how we find ease of mind. So remembering that we're all connected. And the people that voted for Trump are connected to each of us. They are. We're all part of that same energetic body. That's pure love, God. We have souls on this earthly planet and we're in a 3D world, but the energy or the connection we all have, um, we we sense, we know. And I think that's why some of the grieving, some of it, a fraction of it is, is happening too, is that why? I don't understand how, you know, people, other people don't think like I do because we're all connected. Um, the mind is the enemy. It can hurt or it can help us. So using your mind too much, again, staying in that neutral position, not going on the doomsday scrolling, falling to a giant pit of despair, that's in the head. It's not in the feeling state. It's in the head because you start to ruminate and think of every single every single thing that can go wrong. And again, like I said, they may do a bunch of things we're not aware of. They may do some things we think they're going to do and these other things, who knows? Um Anyway, and then I said, who are you? And God says, God, you. He says, God, you, all, love. Those are who God is. So um, I wanted to ask if I could share. And he says, yes, please. It's important for all of you to hear, connect, speak to the one, to God, the one, and all of us. Since they, um, since you can know and feel the love you need to feel to feel that sense of connection. Um, The loss of power, the loss of control is part of this grieving too, is we don't, it's hard to understand, hard to fathom. So uh, it says, he says, your mind is what is faltering in the now. We can only imagine, this is very important, we can only imagine what we know. So, you imagine all these doomsday scenarios because some of it's from history. Some of it's just 
knowledge, some of its movies, whatever it is, you could create these dynamics in your mind. We can only imagine what we know. What don't you know? How could you know what that is? There are infinite possibilities and miracles afoot. That means many energies or many people, many fractions of light who you and I all and all of us are, are, are working in a positive way. Maybe just small things here or there, maybe large things, maybe institutions, but miracles and infinite possibilities are afoot. They're there. They're ready. We just can't imagine them because we live in a state of 3D, you know. So we only think, we only know what we know, right? Uh, this is about us as human, the human nation, the human beings, the being of all of us. Um, I asked, how can we change the situation? And God says, you cannot at the moment, just in this fraction of a moment, things are set in motion to create a world the other group or these people who now have the power want to see and live and make real in life. Um, those, it's, he says, many agree, but can't imagine the darkest parts. So those people that voted or those people that went in that direction, those Americans voted or really want somebody else in power that isn't Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, they can't see the darkest parts. Like we'd only know what we know. So we can't know something that doesn't exist in our mind or unless we learn it, right? Or they, we experience it. The same with other people is they can't imagine that this powerful group or these Trump or whoever would do things because they believe that like me, most people are good. They don't see the darkest spots. They don't see the darkness necessarily because they're in a hopeless state. Um, they only see the good or they ignore the negative, like some people have said, well, I don't like his character, but I like his policies. You know, I wouldn't want him to hang out with him, but I like what he's going to do for the country. But they are looking at him as some, in a different light. It's like a cloudy light. It's brainwashing a little bit because their soul or their their lives are directing them to find something that they can hold on to because the reality of it now is they're hopeless because they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Um, and they need someone to tell them, I'll fix it, obviously. And he sold them the story. Donald Trump is one of the best salesmen in the whole world. And he sold himself and he knows he's a master salesman. So that's what he did, and they. He, he doesn't have any conscience, so the salesman part of him just, you know, gets the sale, and he got sale after sale after after sale, and he they believed him, you know, they just did. We believed him. Those of us saw other parts. We believed him too, but they only wanted to see the good. They didn't want to see the bad. Um, Everyone is on their own timeline, God said. So we are learning this together, but every soul has its different timeline, and how they evolve and what they learn through this timeline. Um, oh, I asked about my own visions. I'll get to that in a minute. And then he's, he, God says, I want you to know all will be well. Um, any time in the history of this planet, power wins. And this is one of those times. Power is won. And it's a cyclical thing. And that's what's happening right now. Power has won. 
And we're just here to experience it. And I've said this before, we've signed our soul contract to be here at this time. This is really important too. It says, democracy lives in people's hearts. It's an idea. It's a philosophy. It is a tangible reality, but we make it so. It's a concept that we've, over the centuries, created. The forefathers created it. And we've expanded and expanded and expanded and created all these institutions to maintain it. But democracy... The idea is in our hearts. And those of us that lived here all our lives, we know what that feels like. And that's where it is. So that doesn't die. That doesn't die. That stays with us. Remember that. That's not just because the building or the people shut down or whatever gets moved around or departments get democracy. The idea of democracy is still alive in our hearts. Um, the institutions may be harshly transformed to the point of unrecognizability, but that's okay. Um, he said there, they will win a lot of battles, of course. Um, and he talks about people, smart planning, changing rules all over. That's what I imagine the three branches are going to be doing. Um, and there will be people that will suffer, obviously. There will be a lot of people that will suffer. There will be job losses. Um, and due to that, more crime, more violence, because people won't have, won't have an option or they'll think they won't have an option. Um, some of those people didn't vote for Trump, but some of them did. So I don't want to be an I told you so person, but this is what hopeless souls do is they hand over the power to someone else and say, fix it. And some of this comes from childhood. They didn't have power in their lives. They don't feel smart enough or, you know, feel like they can't do anything. And, you know, the government, it's this entity over here. But, and that's where everybody is right now. Um, it said they saw, he said they saw his unwillingness to give in. And to never back down. And that wall of um, commitment they saw they don't have because of their powerlessness. So they gave it to him. And he didn't back down to any questions, any laws, anything. So they see him with the power. And he will protect us. That's what they said, or God said. Um, he, they thought... Kamala Harris would let things be the same or worse. And men, especially, although some women didn't come out to vote at all, men liked his thuggery, and I've said that before. And she looked weak and not strong enough to help them feel powerful. And I'm sure that has to do with the femininity, but it also is, a, um, she, she didn't come across that way. That's another subject. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And we, that's it for now. I'm going to do some other stuff. But I just wanted you guys to hear that because it was so very difficult because it's just what it is and what we're supposed to be experiencing. And I'm not one of these people who go, well, we needed to experience bad things happen and you need to go through this experience. I think you, you encounter these things and then you grow from them. I don't know if we embrace negative things because, oh, this is what we need to learn. I think we're all in this giant ship of United States together and the world, honestly. And so we've all decided to be here now, evolve or not. That's why we're here. And some of us are learning to be powerful. Some of us are learning to concede. Some of us are learning... Um, a variety of, you know, passions they didn't think they had. Some of us are learning to be angry. Some of us are learning to voice. Some of us are going within and giving up. We all have different things where we're learning. And I'm not talking about Democrats or Republicans. I'm just talking people in general. That's all. I'm just saying we're all here right now and we're all supposed to learn. I know some of that isn't very heartening but some of it is we I especially like democracy lives in our heart 
and that's never going to go away. It isn't. Nobody can take that away. Remember that. Um, there'll be day-to-day stuff that will shift and change, but miracles and infinite infinite possibilities happen in every moment. Um, yeah. Now for some pragmatic questions, things of a 3D nature. Uh, yeah, first of all, I wanted to say some readers, uh, you know, just adjusting to the reality of what is and what's actually happened. Um, I probably am going to disagree with some out there. Uh, because some readers and intuitives or whoever. Um, I think there's a whole bunch of layers of things that are happening in regards to cheating. And uh, I'll get to those in a second. But I I love Marianne of Revealing Light Tarot. She is like, she's come out of the gate fighting. And I love that. And she's just so dynamic and, you know, She's found her inner lioness. She's going to go get it. So she's become the resistance. I think that's what she's changed her name with. Hashtag resistance. And um, I love that. And many others are, you know, saying they felt that Harris won because she won. And that's it's as simple as that. And they cheated. And Musk was involved and Russia was involved. And they moved uh, votes. They stole ballots. They... Um, did something, and I've seen uh, some other shares about um, ballots that, well, the Boston thing where they, all these ballots were missing, or they weren't missing, but they were supposed to go to these locations. And the city is actually doing an investigation because on the election, the poll workers didn't have the ballots where they were supposed to have them. And all these people waited in line and they didn't have the ballots. And so they were overseeing all what happened and they had to go down there and fix everything but who knows maybe those ballots did get taken in my last couple videos ago I saw a truck and I thought it was either Michigan or Wisconsin an empty like U-Haul truck and I and I always thought why do I see a truck are they moving things because I the question was I remember at the time was are they gonna cheat uh but the feeling I got or the image I got was they have the empty truck that the feds caught him before they could do that. So that's what I got before. But as I aggregate, aggregated all those different readers, uh, newspapers and stuff, I am still open to the thought that there was a mass amount of cheating. I'm still open to the idea that, um, Musk and Russia, they changed the software somehow on some of these machines and especially in red states or places where, you know, the, I guess the numbers don't add up. And I also agree, it's weird. The numbers don't add up. The Why are there less people voting when all, we had super high numbers for early ballots and and all the rallies and the energy for Kamala Harris? So what about that? Why wouldn't that mean something? The missing 20 million ballots somewhere, somehow. And in Florida, somebody was saying how her ballot went in. And I don't remember. I saw this ballot went in. She voted for um, Harris. And she looked online because, you know, you can check. And it said she voted for Trump. And in Arizona, you can't check to who you voted for. But it just says if it was accepted. And... She still went down. They said, oh, yeah, it's wrong. So she put in another one. And again, it went to Trump. So that's an anecdote. I don't know how accurate it is. There's also some, you know, cyber people. I've looked to see that they, I mean, I've read that they have said, oh, no, you can do it this one, this and this. The way to check it is to take some ballots from a really red area to see if, you know, how they're looking on the ballot yeah there's people i don't know if it was florida or texas where a down ballot was all democrat but at the top trump i don't know i'm open to the possibility that that's the reality um i know musk is under a lot of pressure leon musk leon calling him leon musk musky musk and the dusky dusk uh 
he is, yeah. And I asked myself, am I just too scared to see that, that evil power mongering kind of corporate world is taking over the democracy? Yes and no. I'm not, I'm not too nervous about that. I mean, I, I can be, I'm, I, it might limit what I see because I'd be nervous about seeing that. But at the same time, I know the reality of things now. Corporations, money is taking over democracy. It's a fact. It just is. Sheldon Whitehouse, God love him in the Senate. He's pulling the wagon uphill, trying to get dark money out of the Supreme Court and all these other, you know, lobbyists and out of the Congress and Senate and change the rules so we can limit about campaign, um, you know, donations, Citizens United. But uh, I don't, so I'm open to there being conspiracy theories, but I don't think there is. I'm going to lean that way, Scott, guys. I'm probably not, you know, the popular one right now because I don't think so. I do think there's some fraud. I'm not saying there's not. There was those postal workers. God, what state was that? Texas? No. They wanted to prove there was a cyber crime, so they committed a cyber crime. They wanted to prove that a cyber crime wouldn't get caught. So they or um, yeah, a fraud. And so they they were postal workers, so they made fake ballots or signed them fraudulently for someone else and they put him in the mailbox. And they were kicked out. Three went through. I think they did a dozen or something. Three got through, but they wanted to prove that ballots could get through that were fraudulent. So they committed the crime to make them fraudulent. And both of them were arrested. Two, one was a postal worker, I think, and one was somebody else. So there's that. There's some of that. And there are people that are just pro MAGA until the end of the world. And I wouldn't count them out as committing fraud. But missing that many votes or committing that many crimes is, I think that's a, let's, let's just pull cards. Let's just see what happens. Oh, this one fell out. Ace of Pentacles. Money, beginning of money. There is money involved. I know that. There is celebration. I think there was partial. According to these, I got four cup or five of cups and four. There was a celebration. Partially, it was done. So we have that where I'm open to them being cheating. I think there were fraudulent things happening. I don't think there was $20 million made, and I don't know. I guarantee you Russia was involved doing something. I'm not saying they haven't been doing something. They send all those emails saying those, you know, sending people on wild goose chases, all the ballot boxes were burning or the, you know, which they weren't. My mere knowledge or meager knowledge of what these machines do and how they work, they're a closed system. And I know they have software that, is <clears throat> created it's not open software so you can't hack into it with the internet or change something on the fly um, I mean unless you have somebody literally there maybe changing something but I guess that's possible but every state would have to or not every state but most states would There's some quick things happening. So my sense is, as I'm talking, that there is some shenanigans going on. I don't know if... <sighs> it's... As widespread as, as people are saying. 
I'm open to it, but I don't think it's as widespread. I do think there's some fraudulent stuff going on. Okay, let's uh, continue on our travels through cheating and um, widespread fraud. I'm going to pull some cards on um, Musk and Russia. Musk is paying for what he wants. He's powerful, powerful, rich man. Like I said, cor corporations are the... Oh my goodness. Look what I got. Corporations are putting money into, which also, which scares me. Sorry, I'm a rambly and distracted squirrel. Um, elections, they're voting, they're, they're betting on elections now. There's a app or several apps that let you bet on it. Some guy won a bunch of money. That is not good. That needs to change because that puts pressure on people to vote so they can win money. No. Uh, five of Pentacles. So... I think Mr. Musk was worried he was going to lose money and go to jail. Um, did he do anything? Three of Pentacles. Yes, he worked with, which I think the Three of Pentacles is a group effort, working on a project together. Uh, picking. According to this, he... But see, there's one thing's different than him changing the software and the machines or talking to Russians and getting them to integrate somehow, which I know he was doing. I've seen that before. He's definitely been in talks with Russia for a while now. Um, and so he feels like he is the king of the jungle. Cause I, even though this is strength, I feel like that's the line. He feels like he's the king of the jungle and he wants to make more money and he's afraid he's going to lose it. So he did, I know he was in a conversation with Putin, with Trump some recently, but I do think he was. I do think he did something. Did he? Let's just see. I'm going to look at the machines from Musk's point of view. I do think he was working with some company. I see him connected to um, or entities or something where he was trying to support his goals here and they were from foreigners foreign influence um i don't know if he realizes maybe he does how devious russian government can be and what they make you think you know, you're getting it, but they're the ones that are actually benefiting. I think it it's like that. And he's still in that state of, yep, I figured it out. I'm powerful. I can do this. And now I got my way and I'm going to not go to jail and I got my money and it's going to get even better. We're going to have this partnership with Russia and we're going to collaborate on all this stuff. That's the feeling I get. So his was more about money and getting Trump in office and not going to jail. But did he... I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but Russia definitely wants to. They are totally on board with doing anything anybody wants to destroy democracy. And unfortunately, Trump is going to open the door for that. Um, he will. But it's not going to be forever remember that oh i really quickly well no let me i'm distracted now i'm going to talk about that in a second and then corporations taking control of democracy they want to privatize everything so people can make money there's so much money in social security so much money in healthcare, so much money in defense they want to just take let's all make money make the companies or ed, department of education too we're going to privatize everything and everybody's going to um these um, their buddies are going to have these businesses and they're going to get that government money that normally was paid to Department of Education, whatever, or um, health care, whatever it was. Insurance companies are going to love it. It's just all about money, 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 money. So why? Why didn't she win? If it wasn't cheating, if we had all this energy and everybody was on board, why did she not win? Well, like I said, it's a combination of things. And what I 
I was doing that journaling this morning, I got that the people in these, um, Steve Ratner has these charts about the mid, you know, the upper Midwest where a lot of the manufacturing jobs are. They've been just going down and down and everybody's been losing money for the last 40 years. They're, they're not making money like they used to. So it's a lot of un, there's hopelessness because they can't do the job that they want to support their family with. And those people didn't think Biden was doing a good enough job. And it makes me so mad they never communicated that. Biden's administration did not communicate that. And I've said this for years. He is not blowing his own horn. Trump, like I said, is a salesman. He will say, I can do anything. And sure, I'll give you everything you want. Biden has done very well. There's practically 2% unemployment. It can't get much less than that. There's inflation is down. The um, health care is good. We've got the infrastructure bill. They're, they're bringing chips back. They're doing all these things that are growing the economy. But of course, Trump will take credit for it. But Biden did not talk about it. It was a big, giant flaw that the Democratic committee did not talk about it. They didn't. I know they wanted to separate Biden from Kamala, but that was a flaw because they couldn't give her credit for anything. There was nothing good, apparently. She just let migrants in and there was crime everywhere and inflation. And they never combated that heartily, thoughtfully with a, you know, it's terrible. So they didn't communicate to those regular people who are struggling. That's another aspect. Democrats have become more and more left, much more left. And there's so many more people in the middle and to the left and to the right a little bit. She, again, was, and I'm trying not to do Kamala bashing, but she still, when she answered that town hall questions, I complained then. I said I'd vote for her, and I did. But she is not relatable. She just isn't. So she's got that going against her. So there's something about her, even though she's highly intelligent, she and she grew up low to middle class life. She was repeating these off script stuff over and over and over. I didn't believe what she said. If you tell me something over and over, I'm not, I don't, you're not telling me things that are happily authentic to you. You're just repeating stuff. So why would I vote for you? I want somebody that I can have a conversation with. Not that Trump is like that, but I, he at least comes across as somebody who um, is aware and is, you know, giving you the attention you need, even though I know he's, he's a broken person and he's a narcissist, but he comes across that way. So that's why those people in the Midwest, upper Midwest, were running out of ideas. So there's that. And they thought that he could help women. And then you've got a lot of these... Um, Hispanic, uh, traditional kind of macho guys, maybe the Arab Americans, I don't know, but they don't want a woman in power. White men too, don't want a woman in power. They just don't see it. And the hopelessness from the men and those families in the upper Midwest, they didn't see that she could have their back. I saw that they were so powerless that she was going to, you know, let them fall farther and farther down. And he was their only hope, you know? So that's that. No communication, no forceful. Not Then she didn't go on these, go where the voters are. Go where the people that she needs their vote live. Everything is online now. Streaming uh, platforms, podcast. She didn't go on Joe Rogan's podcast. Brian Taylor Green, Tyler Green, or I think that's, he's an actor, 90210. Brian Tyler Cohen. He um, had a very short video the other day saying, uh, he was complaining about the Democratic strategy. Was They never went to where the people are. And the, the big giant propaganda machine that is churning out propaganda 24-7, on these right wing or online, um, let's see, online 
places like TikTok, Rumble, Facebook, 24 hours, uh, years and years, and Discord servers. He said the top 20 podcasts are like mostly right-wing podcasts. Did she go on those? Did she go into the Dragon's Lair? No, she, it, she, it's, it was like, um, a kind of, and she didn't go on the ground with many of these cities saying their ground um, campaign didn't get any information. They weren't spoken to from the higher up people in the campaign. So the people on the ground know their people. They know the voters there. They didn't get any information. It was sort of like it was a helicopter campaign. Don't get me wrong. I love her. I think she would have been a fantastic president. I'm just talking about this algorithm, the aggregating of all this information and why she didn't win. It was unfortunate because she's a woman and she just, that's people, even women. And so I think people abstained. I think they didn't want to vote for Trump and they didn't want to vote for her. And I think that's why there's less votes. Ultimately, I think even though they had a massive turning out at the beginning, uh, I don't think the women came out as she would have liked. Young people certainly did. And Trump courted the Hispanics, which I guess he, you know, flipped a ton. And uh, black men and um, younger people in these um, underserved or uh, undercommunicated groups. He went to them and said, I hear you. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. Whether he means it or not, it doesn't matter. It's because they believed it. And so that's another reason. She went to the traditional campaign and that doesn't work anymore. It just doesn't. So for that reason and other things, I think there wasn't so much cheating as it was just a decision. And I think there was a residual energy from the trauma of COVID. So why would people want Trump back in office when we had chaos and division and craziness four years, 16 to or 17 to 21 or whatever. People have a short memory. Americans are notoriously short memory. But he, they still had residual angst. And so they didn't see the inflation numbers. They didn't feel good. Even though things were better, things are better. Things are more expensive. They are all expensive all over the world. That's the Biden administration should have talked about that. Should have talked about inflation all over the world and the right wing getting more and more positions in Europe and everything. That's a reality. We're not the only country that this is happening because people want more control of immigration. Um, she needed to address immigration head on. And all they did was pump out commercials about transgender surgeries in prison. And she didn't combat that and say that was Trump's policy. <sighs> marketing. Unfortunately, it was marketing and sales. That's what it is. So did the votes really go to Trump? I think most of them did. And I know that's probably not a happy answer for many of you, but I think most of them did. People, it was a red wave. Now, I was concerned about the three branches of government being, uh, I'm going to read this to you because I found it very interesting. The three branches of government, when were they, you know, when was the last time have we had, you know, the big Way, red wave and what happened during those times people keep bringing up germany and hitler and you know hitler lost the first time he ran for office and i don't know how many years later he got in but i think he it wasn't as extreme so it's sort of similar but germany was not a democracy in the 30s or 20s they didn't have the same system of government the country is not as big. There isn't any social media back then. There, It's also more dangerous because there is social media, but there wasn't the same situation. So we, yes, powerful men and propaganda makes you vote for them. It makes you want them in power. That's the universal thing. Propaganda and money and power all go together. And on both sides, I mean, a lot of people you know, use propaganda to get themselves elected. All right, here we go. So somebody was online saying that this will be the first time since 1929 that one party controlled the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of the government at the same time. They were wrong. And somebody else responded and, and said, no, that was 
um, the Democrats controlled it in 2009 to 2011. That's not right either. They did some research. It said Republicans controlled between 2001 and 2007, Republicans controlled at certain points all three branches of um, while President Bush occupied the White House. Between 2001 and 2003, they flipped a few seats due to um, senators. One died and they flipped seats there. Between 1961 and 1969, Democrats controlled all three branches during Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson's um presidential administrations if you can imagine we had the social security act and 1964 for civil rights act it's a good thing 83rd congress 1953 to 1955 during dwight d heisenhower's they saw a bunch of deaths of senators so they had um all branches were under the republican control 37 to 45 democrats so that was eight years democrats controlled all three branches of government during franklin roosevelt and harry s truman and from 27 to 33, Republicans controlled all three branches of government when Calvin Coolidge and Herbert Hoover controlled the White House. So both parties have controlled it, and they swung the pendulum here. They tried to get their stuff in, swung the pendulum there. Um, all, Although presidents appoint Supreme Court justices, their appointees don't always perform as the president expects. Um, sometimes they get more conservative, sometimes they get more liberal. Um, the last time a one party controlled all three branches was 2007 when the Republicans held the White House, both chambers of commerce and the majority of the Supreme Court. And then Democrats or Republicans have controlled all three branches at various points since 1929. So you know how it goes cyclical like that. The big thing is, is corporations and money that has changed dramatically. That is feeding these uh, big swings in policy to make money. So, but we've never had somebody as narcissistic and sociopathic as Trump. I think this is going to be a very long video. So I'm going to continue on with another one. You guys take care.